Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to share with you how you can build a, a, a Discord bot in C-sharp.net, right? There's a lot of examples out there and uh, available ideas that you can uh, consume and kind of practice. I want this video to be sweet and short and simple and just gets to the point for .NET uh, developers and at the very end we kind of combine two powers together and show you a nice nice little surprise where you can kind of you know see how things work and all that so for starters you know if you are familiar with discord if you're not familiar with discord that's okay you know I can I can kind of give you a quick intro discord is like it's the IRC of the day and age that we're in you know there used to be an IRC internet relay chat where Everybody with different interests would come in. You know, if you're a .NET developer, you're probably in some of these kind of groups. There's thousands and thousands of people. Like just this channel itself, you know, has about a thousand three hundred uh, and seventy person that talks about Xamarin and .NET and all that fun stuff. You'll find someone who's interested in the same things that you're interested in. Discord is an amazing place for that. But you know, this this particular video not necessarily about Discord and its benefits. It's about how to create a bot that can help you kind of find quick answers as you're engaging with people. It's about building community, but using, you know, intelligence and software engineering to build a community and support that community in an automated way. So it's about automation, it's about exposure to Discord, and then, you know, maybe you can develop your own bot, something that's useful, that's out there in the market that people could take advantage of. Okay, I want to build a bot. I want my bot to run in Discord, and I want to be able to talk to it and do stuff with it what where do I start if I'm a dotnet developer so for starters let's just go ahead to a web page and let's just say discord bot I want to create a discord bot it'll take you to a discord developer docs intro right and then this intro click on getting started assuming that you are logged in with your account pay very close attention to that one I want to create an app let's create our app you know I have already one out there that's the standard bot I will create one that says I don't know YouTube demo bot right I'm clicking here I'm clicking create so I just created what I need to you know start a bot process um, pay attention to application IDs and public IDs and whatnot but I'm gonna go in the bot area here by default you have a, um, a an icon but what I want you to take a look at here is the token right it's gonna create a token I need to create my pass I enter my password here so here's a token we're gonna copy that token somewhere because it's gonna be important for us later right so here's our token I'm gonna put that token somewhere in here there we go okay so that's a token that I have here saved safely somewhere and then I'm gonna go back here to my desktop and you know really pretty much if you go into um, there is a place here where you basically want to say because we want to generate a URL for this so this is a public bot require OAuth grant privilege gateway message content here you click bot in here and you basically let's just say it's an administrator just remember this link down here that you know we're gonna be using later you can of course control the permissions and what this bot can do and all that kind of stuff I'm doing administrator just to make things quick and simple right Let's go write some code, right? So here's where it gets interesting. I want to basically spin up a new project. It's going to be a very simple console application. And I'm going to show you how you can deploy it, how you can run with it. So this is demo YouTube bot or YouTube demo bot. There you go. And it's in .NET. Great. Use up top level statements. Thank you. Whoever decided to make that decision. And here's here's the thing. So the first thing I want to do, you probably want to pull in your dependencies. So I'm just going to go up in here in Discord and just type Discord in, in my NuGet package and type Discord. And I think the one we want is Discord.net, this guy right here. I'll put that in there. Don't worry, I'll share the code with you in the description. I'll share everything I can with you. So so, so that's that's the part. That's the beginning. The beginning is that I am basically calling this dependency in here and I will work with this dependency. Uh, let's start with the basic things right I'm gonna go up in here and say private read-only um, uh, discord socket client so this is a client that will allow you to talk to discord right so far so good I also want a token so private read-only string 
token. Let's make it a constant. Const uh, string token. And we're going to paste that token that we got in there. So here's my token right here. So we have a token. Just be careful. You see these two empty, like that one extra line? The developers of Discord are so nice. They decided to even parse with that at the very end from how many times this is happening. So they programmed against it. So they'll send you a message that say, by the way, there is a an extra line in your token. Your token is right, but it has an extra line in it. You know, that's pretty sweet, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll remove that just for now. But I thought I'd point that out. Whoever whoever wrote that is, is, is pretty smart. Okay, now let's let's initialize this guy, right? I want to basically go and say, let's let's go ahead and do a C tour in here. And then this guy, I'm going to go and say, well, I don't need to initialize my token, but I need to definitely initialize my client. So a new Discord socket client is your client. And then I want to listen to messages that will be received by this guy. So I'm just going to go here and say client, right? That message received, message received. It's a delegate. But I'm going to leave it empty now for a second until things happen. So I'm just going to go and say, comment this section. We'll get to that part very, very, very shortly. I want to start running the uh, the actual client, like start listening, right? So let's go ahead and develop a service in here. So public or, or, a, or a method that basically says, here's my task, uh, uh, start bot async like this. And then I'm going to go up in here. All we really want to do is just go ahead and say await this.client and then start async. That's really all you have to do. You can, if you want to keep that running because this is a console app, you can do a nice trick in here and say task, task delay minus one. That basically means it's going to keep running forever. You're basically in an infinite running thing. And we're going to need that in a second. Okay, cool. What else I want to do here? I want a place where when I receive a message, a message handler, I need to make a decision, right? I need to be able to make a decision. So watch this. So in here, this is what this listener is going to be listening to in the initialization stage, right? So I'm just going to go up in here and say private async, private async uh, value task, uh, or maybe it'll take a task because it's like a delegate and whatnot. And then this is my message handler. It's like a listener and it takes a socket message so here's my message right here. And then I want to go and say, if the sender of this message, if the author is a bot, don't respond. Like, don't do anything. Because that, that will just create an infinite loop. It'll look ugly for everybody. Otherwise, await and then reply. Reply to the message. And this reply is a method that we have to build ourselves in a second. You basically want to get that message that you just received but also send the response. So this is um, uh, C sharp response works like that, something like this. OK, so this is me saying reply. So now that I have this method, I can go back up here to my initializer and go and say, here's my message hint. So when a message is received, it's going to kick off an event. And that event will basically come down to you. And you'll be able to kind of work with it and all that. Okay, cool. I don't have reply async though. Can I create one? Sure can. So here's here's the reply here, and you can basically do really like like for this particular case, you know, you basically want to go and say this dot uh, client uh, will await this dot client dot um, a message. This is a message that you're receiving. This is a response in here. And then I want to go and say, well, the message dot channel dot uh, send message async. And that's your response. That's really all that this is doing is basically saying this message has been received. Respond to that particular message like that. OK, so far, so good. Super dirty code, but it's basically showing you what we're doing here. You know, the point of it. Um, and I'm, I'm saying C sharp response work as an always going to be a response for anything I'm basically doing in here, right? The last thing here is to basically initialize this thing, right? There's, there's many, many different ways you can initialize this thing. You can basically go and say, this is an asynchronous task. Let's see if we do it this way. And then basically say, uh, my bot new, uh, program 
like that. So I just initialize it and then await my bot start async, something like that. That should do the trick, I think. <clears throat> we can do it this way, right? So I have that information in here. What happens when I run this application? Let's just run this real quick. We can also, actually, we can also log some events and whatnot, but I'll get back to this one. I just want to keep it really bare bone for you. Uh, now, we want to talk to this bot. Let's go back here and basically say, uh, I want to test it. So I'll test, my, I'll test it myself, invite general information. Let's see if I can add this to Discord in here real quick. So Discord. Um, Let's see. So back to application. Okay. Add bot to add my bot to channel. It's like a special link. I need to to save it here as well for people. Discord server. Uh, let's see. I think there is there is a place called applications, and in applications you basically let's see applications. Discord, add bot. Oh, not this one. What if I just added it from here? Let's see. So if I'm adding this in this server. And I'm basically going and saying invite um, server settings overview integrations. You can see that bot in here, right? And there's a directory, but this bot is not publicly available yet. It's something that I want to add myself. So let me see if it just comes down in here. It's a very special link that I also want. Like a lot of these videos also play as a documentation, so we know how to do things. Uh, I think there's a particular URL. Admin. Yeah, so you copy that link here. Yeah, I remember now. And then you go to that link, I think, and then you add it to your server. So you see this is the standard community server and click to continue, and I add it as an administrator. So I, this is basically me just allowing my bot to join the server. So now, watch this. I'm just going to chat with it. So I'm just going to go here and say um, simple chat right here, and I'm going to say hi. I, originally, I don't think it's going to say anything because I'm not running the app, right? So if I go back here, uh, not this one. If I go back and, summer, uh, and run this bot like this, now it's running. It should show as online. And let's try to say hi again. See here. Nope, that didn't work. Let's see if it received the message actually. So message handler in here. Like we know that this is running in here. Let's see if it actually received the message. So this is hi. Nope, it did not receive the message. Let's see why is that. So you have your program, internal class, you created the client. We initialize, initialize the client. This is our message handler. Uh, I'll put a breakpoint here as well. And then start bot async, which will start the bot. And then there's reply, re, reply, or replay, reply async, and then there's the main method. And that's that. Maybe maybe we need to single thread this. Let's see if we can do this. So if I do, let's see here. Let me do it this way. So this is new program. Um, uh, uh, this is start bot async wait get result. Get a waiter get result. Let's see if that kind of holds that thread in there. Let's do it this way. This is basically me holding it from 
from a gitch, basically. So if I go back here and say hi, does that work? It did not come through. Let's see why is that. So, so we have the token. We we did initialize the application. We did say start the client. Um, sending the messages. This is all good. It might be just something with maybe publishing or updating that client. Let's see. So this is this is our app. We did say administrator. We have the link. We have the bot. Do I just give it permissions like that? So client secret, client ID. You don't have to use these, but we certainly need Yeah, all of that. We already added this guy. So that link that you have, see the standard community, and you continue, and you add it as a... I don't think it'll... We just want to listen to this bot, really. As soon as it goes back online, like if you see this bot showing as online, that basically does the trick. You you're you're already are listening. Um, you're listening to this bot. So let's see here why it's not listening to it. So this is running. Let's put some logs. Maybe the logs will kind of show us really what's going on in there. Uh, I will say client await this dot client dot log async, right? And I want to uh, say token type bot. And then here's the token. So this is me logging events. I don't know if I need to log anywhere else client log uh, except for uh, on I basically need to do something similar to that on the actual client so let me put that in a method log like that and then maybe I can say, well, hold on. So, so I can basically just say like this client, this client dot log, right? And you're basically just saying put that function in there. So I can create a function on the fly like log func that is actually local to this method. And I think this function might need to, um, let's see, I think it needs to be at the bottom of the method or something like that. It's a task like that, log func async, like that. What else does it need? Uh, the await operator can only be within an async, sure. So async, there you go. So I have a function in here, and I can put that function right here. So that's me registering that function. What does this guy expect though? It expects something that takes in log message. Right, so log message. Right, and this message that I'm getting, I want to print it out as well while I'm at it. So console.write line uh, message in here. That would do the trick for me. So you want to log and see what, what's actually happening for this. Um, I don't need log in async here though. I just need to log the message basically. Yeah, just like that. Let's see what's happening to this bot. Yeah, it's basically saying here it is. It's basically saying the client must be logged in before connecting. Okay, so there is a login part that I missed. So before start async, I need to say await this dot client dot login async. This is that bot token type bot token type bot, and then also I want to pass in the token to this. Yeah, that that's the trick. So if I run this, there you go, connecting, connected, ready, beautiful. So now if I go back to 
Discord. This guy is online. If I say hi to it, it will hit the breakpoint. Look at that. Beautiful. And then it will respond with whatever I want up in here. Here we go. C, C sharp response right here. Right? How simple is that? Right? So you basically log in, get the client, log in, hit the client, done. No problem. Right? And now that you're watching this, you might know by now what I'm going to do with this bot, really. Right? Remember, I just wrote, I just recorded a session that talks about working with OpenAI. So really what I'm going to do is that kind of revert hiding all the keys and all the the details for this. So I have all my keys here and I'm literally going to take this whole code as is and put it in a method. So I'm going to go here and say uh, uh, private async task string get AI response. Okay, and this is my message, the incoming message, right? And I'm literally putting everything I have in here. Of course, a lot of this is not going to work because we need to go and install the instance, the, the, the dependencies. So here's my dependencies. Here's my dependency. Here's OpenAI for Azure. I'm going to slap that in there. This is like a the pro way of adding dependencies. Instead of just clicking buttons, you're really just adding adding the references directly let's let's pull in the, these references that we just added i think we just have to say uh load load dependencies we need to use azure open ai something like that did it not pull the dependency it didn't <laughs> let's go back here and see why it's not so pro yeah, OpenAI right here. Oh, I added it while the app is running. That's why. There you go. So I added it in here. So now if I go down here and say, give me all these dependencies, it should work. There you go. So now I have a method that basically does a response. I just need to return that response in here. Return response, just like that. And instead of saying... Uh, C sharp works. I'm basically saying, no. Here's a, here's an actual value. You know, here, here's the message, the incoming message. So this is get response like that, and get response once the message dot content. So that's the person that's sending me a message, and this is awaitable. Super dirty code, but it's 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 a proof of concept. It's just showing you how things work, right? Um, now if I run this bot. Now I have a super intelligent bot, assuming that it runs. Let's see why it's not running. OpenAI, oh, I already pulled the dependency here. Let's run this. There you go. So now this is running. Let's go back to Discord and say, summarize the standard, which is what I fed uh, to this bot. Let's see if it works. There you go. Now you have a super smart AI bot that you can ask it any questions you want, any question you want, and it will go through Azure. So that's Discord talking to Azure, talking to OpenAI, getting you some answers and responding with. So if I go and say write some code, here's what I love about this bot the most. It, de it detects when it's writing code, write some code example in C sharp that shows a, a test method for adding a student to a database. Uh, brokers, why is it repeating the same message? Something is missing. So that's a bug. Um, <laughs> I could just wrap my demo, but I really want this to work. So let's see why, why it didn't really get that message the way it's supposed to. So let me go to uh, the demo. This is the Discord client. Oh, because this is hard coded and I want this message to go up in here. That's right. That's right. So you, you're going to have to debug on the fly when you're doing 
uh, YouTube sessions. So let's do this. So I'm going to go up in here and ask it the same question. And then hopefully it will give me give me some code. There it is. Test method. Here is your here's your ideas. It's not necessarily standard compliant, but you know, you get the idea. You get, you know, how it did all of this, you know, like that. Um, if I say what if I say write a standard compliant example of a test method is just da da that is through a broker. It might work this time. See? There it is. That's standard com compliant. That's exactly what we're looking for. Super fun stuff. <laughs> you basically, I don't know which one of these videos is going to go first, right? But one of them has to refer to the other. They have to refer to each other. At least this particular video has to refer to the one where it's talking to OpenAI. Um, I apologize for the little going back and forth, but that's how I do my videos. You know, there's always back and forth and I have to show you in real time how I'm thinking, how I'm debugging, how I'm finding issues. Uh, a lot of the code that I write is code that I've written once and twice and three times and I save some of it here and there. So I just make it a nice presentation experience for you. But you also have to be able to kind of uh, debug things on the fly. I hope you found this a little bit useful. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of uses for this. Go out there, see if you can do the exact same thing with a Teams bot or a WhatsApp bot or a Facebook bot, LinkedIn bots, you know, whatever you want to do with it, you know, take that knowledge, take that and flourish it, turn it into something useful. And as usual, I hope you find this a little bit useful for you. If you, um, if you find this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to donate to our causes. Uh, I appreciate uh, your time and see you in another video. Take care. Bye.